This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Rathmel versus Lux Days Resort and Spa. Mr. and Mrs. Rathmel, it's my understanding that you are suing for injuries that Mr. Rathmel sustained while you were on vacation at this spa. You are asking this court to award you $40,000 for your past medical expenses, $5,000 for your future medical expenses, and $200,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $245,000, right? Yes, yes, Your sir. Honor. And Mr. Clark, you're here representing Lux Days Resort and Spa, right? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe that had they followed the directions that they were given, they never would have been injured? Yes, Your Honor, wholeheartedly. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Mr. and Mrs. Rathmel, how did you all get to choose Lux Days Resort and Spa? Well, it, it's the first spot that he took me when we honeymooned. Um, so it was, it was pretty romantic of him to kind of take me back, actually. Um, and we enjoyed it. It was about 10 years ago, a decade ago, but um, it was fantastic. We had a great experience at that time. I know it was young love, but that young love is still going on now, so. I met John during a blind date. My best friend set us up. I was not looking forward to seeing anybody, but this guy here kind of schmoozed me over. Uh... I'm romantic like that. Romance is beautiful. Yes, sir. This young lady left her medical field to come support my business, which has grown immensely because of her. And so I said, hey, you know, it's time to do something nice. Gladly. Well, Mrs. Rathnell, you've got some medical training. Uh, yeah, I have about eight years as a nurse, um, but I gave all that up for this guy. I mean, we're running our own company, so he kind of needed the help behind the scenes, so I do all the administrative work and hiring contractors and things like that. Mr. Clark, you are here representing Lux Days Spa and Resort, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about the resort. Um, I started working at the Lux Days Resort and Spa about 10 years ago when I was in college. I started off as a bellman and I worked my way up to a management position. Um, our resort offers anything you will want on a dream vacation. We have gourmet food, state-of-the-art fitness facilities, and we also offer a private view of the beach, as you can see here. Yes, yeah, beautiful. So, no. so couples come there to have a relaxing time on the beach, enjoying the restaurants. That's the way it's supposed to work. Yes, Your Honor. We have thousands of guests annually, repeat guests, because they love what we have and we do our best to keep them coming back. So what happened? That morning I woke up and, you know, I went and got a little mani petty, a little alone time for myself while I let my husband sleep. Um, and I kind of signed us up for a little couple's massage. He's hard on himself, so, you know, I decided, you know, let's get some massages. So then we went and had some lunch and we're from the Midwest, so we don't have many beaches. So they do have beautiful views, so we walked along the beach and just reminiscing about our 10 years together. Suddenly, it just became a little bit more cooler, so my husband suggested, honey, maybe we should just gather our things. Then suddenly, a gust of wind started coming our way. Well, okay. You, now, I'm gonna have to jump in there because this is the part that got me a little upset. Now, All right. I know, I know we can't control the wind, we can't control what's going on with it, but as we were going back, I saw, as the gust picked up, an umbrella coming through. Umbrella was coming at my wife like a missile. Like, was... like the umbrellas that you sit under when you're trying to tan again? Yes, sir. The big yeah. beach umbrella with all the metal and a, a nylon and all that stuff there. Like this umbrella in the courtroom? Exactly like that one right there, Your Honor. Okay. All right, now I saw that coming at my wife. It was airborne. It was airborne. It was coming like a missile. Okay. Now, my thing, naturally, first of all, I'm a man. This is my woman. I'm going to protect my woman. So, I jumped in front of her, making sure it did not hit her. She's gorgeous. I'm not gonna let anything hurt this woman. All right? So I jumped in front of it, and I got hit in my back left, uh, left side here. Now, Your Honor, I was a very good amateur boxer. Yes, sir. 12 and one record, never been knocked down. I never got hit as hard as I did when that umbrella hit me in my side. So this umbrella comes out of the sand and it's airborne like a javelin. It's airborne, Your Honor. It came, it came at her like it was just targeting her, like it was a direct missile for her. It, I... got, it knocked him out so hard, Your Honor, that he couldn't even breathe. And the next thing that I seen was like his face was bleeding and I didn't know where it was coming from. And although I am in the medical field, I was trying to tend to him and also calm my own nerves. It felt like it took hours for someone to come help us, Your Honor. Did you realize at that time that you were badly injured? Uh, not as bad as I uh, eventually found out, Your Honor. I mean, I know I got hit in the backside. I didn't know the extensive, uh, extensiveness of the damage until later. I just knew I was hurt. Mr. Clark, how did you come to, to know that something bad had happened? Um, well, first and foremost, the, the weather earlier in the day 
was perfect. It was just fine, like they said. Um, but I had my security staff monitor the forecast 24-7. Okay. And they told me that inclement weather and a possible storm was approaching. So I told all my staff to make sure all of the guests go inside and get off of the beach just because, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in a storm. What time was that, sir? In the morning. In the morning. Mm. So why didn't you guys warn us early? Ms. Ms. Rathmel, I appreciate that. And those are appropriate questions, but they kind of come from me. Sorry. Okay? Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, why didn't you tell the guests earlier? We knew that a storm was possibly coming, but we, we weren't for certain. But once we were certain that it was coming our way and that was, could be severe, that's when we decided to, you know, get all the guests off the beach, have them gather their things. I had one of my employees speak to the Rathmels. The Rathmels said they would leave. No. That is and not they never true. did. I actually have uh, it's a storm. Of footage. course, it's going to be I have windy. security footage and of unexpected. the weather from the incident. <laughs> okay. And the bottom line, that's not our fault. You know, it's a, it's, it's nature. So this is this is security footage from that day. Yes, Your Honor. And the and the and Mr. and Mrs. Rathmel, the the wind was blowing like that. Well, Your Honor, by the time it got to that point, we were already at our location picking our stuff up. It wasn't that hard at first. When it got to that point. We were moving our, our stuff and going in towards the inside. You know, it was no sense of urgency from the message telling everybody to move in. So, so with winds like this, it picked that umbrella up and sent it airborne. It was going to impale your wife. That's it why you going, stepped in the way. It was going it to. It was kind of like a sail, Your Honor. If you imagine a sail uh, in the wind, right? It, it, this is that not our part. This is not our fault, Your Honor. It's, well, it was the wind. How could this not be your fault? It was coming. These are your umbrellas, right? Yeah, these are our umbrellas. But we told all guests to get off the beach. They refused to leave. Everyone else was gone. They were the only ones who stayed. Did y'all get that warning? That is, you need to get up and leave now. Uh, Your Honor, they came and kindly told us to leave softly. No one, there was no sense of urgency in anybody's voice. The big My hold up. Boys don't yell. We're going to be hold polite. up, sir. Yo, when you look at this video, you got to understand, those are very, very strong winds. Everybody can see that, right? Well, Judge, we're from the Midwest, so winds are, they're common to us. But there have been reports all over the news that other resorts have gone through this with beaches and, and they're having to secure their equipment. So right. they're such experts on the wind and the rain. Shouldn't they be experts at what's happening at other resorts? So you submitted this video to the court. Is that how the wind was blowing out there exactly, that day? Exactly, Your Honor. They should have secured those umbrellas. You see how hard those winds are going and you see the, the umbrellas flying? That thing was like a two by four. Those things are moving fast, sir. You just doesn't seem the same on TV in person. Those That's things nothing. are moving That's fast. That's nothing. This is another another resort where the umbrellas had a mind of their own. Correct, and it was all over the news. Had they been secure, sir, they wouldn't be flying around like that. So they may not be able to secure everything. You would think that. Your These Honor, folks I have my employees securing the umbrellas as we were escorting guests. Mr. Off Clark, the that's a dangerous situation. A lot of people could have been killed out there. You talked about this uh, umbrella nearly impaling you, and I see you've hurt your neck. Tell me about your injuries. Well, sir, at the backside, I have uh, two broken ribs, all right? A punctured lung. Of course, you should see the bruising. I could show you the bruising as well, sir, if, if you have it. I have uh, my neck, uh, I had whiplash, and of course, I got a gash to this beautiful face, which my, life, my wife still loves. <laughs> But um, I see you're asking this court to give you forty thousand dollars for your past medicals and five thousand for your future medicals. Now, the biggest number you're seeking is two hundred thousand dollars for pain and suffering. Yes, tell sir. me about that. That's a lot of money. Well, sir, I tell you right now. Again, I'm a construction owner. All right, so I do a lot of heavy lifting. I work with my men. I don't just give them direction. I'm there with them. I also have children and a wife that I want to love and hug. We have a very active lifestyle. I have a hard time raising my arm. I have a hard time breathing. Well, you got to let it heal, uh, but it costs money. Yes, sir. It costs money to run a business. It costs money to have a family. And it costs money for those medical expenses. Can I give you a good look at it, sir? Now, this is where the umbrella actually hit you. Yes, sir. I tell you, I've never been hit like this before. Wow. So, Your Honor, this is day okay. two at the resort. Not yes. to mention the fact that we had to cut our vacation short and we were in the hospital the whole time. Mr. Clark, this isn't how this is supposed to turn out. This, this could have been a death case. Oh, it, it definitely could have been deadly. And, and it's very unfortunate that, you know, Mr. Rathmel got injured, but 
we can't control the weather or how fast it comes. So we have systems and protocols put in place for inclement weather. It reads, what to do 30 minutes before storm arrives. Number one, notify all guests that a storm is coming. Y'all did that. With the text message. Number two, any guest on the beach must leave immediately until the weather clears and announcement is made. Number three is secure all beach furniture in nearby storage. That's what you all were trying to do as you asked people to get off the beach. Right. Really, all three of those things ought to be happening. Correct. Which it, it sounds like what you all tried to do. Yes, we did the first two. We were also doing the third. But, Mr. Clark, you understand that had you secured this umbrella... At nine... It never would have impaled Mr. Rathmel, right? I understand right. that, but... <laughs> That's right. Either way. We were securing the umbrellas, but we also sent them a text message as well at 1.30. Well, Your you Honor, submitted that to the case. court. Closed. Let's take a look at it. It reads, attention all guests, please be advised that we are expecting high winds today. Listen for alerts from our resort staff for your safety. We hope you continue to enjoy your stay at Lux Days. That's what you sent to all guests. Does yes, that Your sound Honor. Did, did you all get that text message? We did not get it, first of all, sir, because we left our phones and everything in our room. We didn't have our... It's we 2019. Be, who leaves their phone in their room? Well, who takes... Yeah, listen. <laughs> it's a getaway. It's, it's, a, it's a resort. It was a, yeah. it, was a, it was a loving getaway. We wanted to be disconnected from everybody but each other. We were so unplugged, we... Your Honor. Now, you brought one of your staff with you, Mr. Doug Jenkins. Yes, All sir. right, Mr. Jenkins, if you would rise and go to the podium, what is your role in this whole story? So I was working at the resort that day, and we had been informed that morning that there was potential of that inclement morning, weather later exactly. that day. And there was a warning text sent out to all of our patrons exactly. to be alert and to be aware. Exactly. So, however, when we noticed that weather was starting to pick up, the winds were starting to get a little bit higher, that's when we officially closed the beach down. At around 1.30, we sent out another message letting all of our patrons know the facility was shut down, they needed to move inside for their safety. So there were two warnings sent, written warnings? Two official written warnings and then one verbal warning because I ran into the Rathmels on the beach. You remember this? Yes, sir, very specifically. He did. He did. So what happened? I told them that the weather was picking up and that for their safety, they needed to vacate the area and the beach was closed. They Which refused. Which is what we were starting to do. So That's do you all remember that conversation? Well, I do. His, his message was they had no sense of urgency whatsoever. Your Honor, I train my staff to be polite. We're not going to yell at anybody or drag anybody inside. <laughs> all we can do is warn them. It has well, Your Honor, it has nothing to do about being polite. Well, we'll, we'll do this. Say it to me the way you said it to them. I said, the weather is expected to get worse. The beach is closed temporarily. We will let you know if it reopens. But for now, we need you to gather your belongings and head inside for your safety. Now, uh, that went not, not at all. <laughs> what makes it more urgent than that? Now, y'all, one Honor, of the things that, that I learned in law school is common sense never leaves the courtroom. Thank right. you, Your Honor. Okay? Common sense kind of tells you when the wind is blowing like that, you need to get up and get. That's what we were exactly. doing. That's what we were doing. At the end of the day, Your Honor, they were not prepared for this storm in the morning time. So let's say 15 minutes before a storm hits. You never know when a storm is going to hit. Why didn't they prepare early that morning? And, or you maybe know. you guys should have been inside. Mr. Jenkins, thank you, sir. Like I said, Your Honor, he wants us to stay inside because of a possibility of a storm. And we were in the process of going inside. We can't be held liable. If we tell you to leave with weather like this and you want to stay outside because you're from the they Midwest did not and love their rain, equipment on then that's time, their Your business. Honor. Your gear should have been locked down in the first place. The gear was locked down what and you should have been inside. Out there? Right. I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove that the defendant was wrong and that the defendant's wrong caused your harm. Your harm is undisputed, so that stands. What you must prove is that the resort did something wrong that caused these injuries. Here, you all have put up evidence with, with videos showing blowing umbrellas. You've uh, shown that uh, you were trying to get out in this umbrella came in the air and nearly impaled you. You believe that the resort should have warned you with more passion and they should have secured those umbrellas so you'd have a safe opportunity to get off the beach. Mr. Clark, on behalf of the resort, you've put up a vigorous defense. You believe had they heeded your instruction, your warning by Mr. Jenkins to get off the beach, Mr. Rathmel would have never been injured. Yes, Your Honor. 
the three tentacles of the law that touch this case. One is act of God. No one can anticipate certain weather events, certain things happening. It's not like God threw the umbrella at you, but these winds kicked up, it sounds like, somewhat unexpectedly and sent this umbrella flying in a courtroom. An act of God is no one's fault. The second legal principle is personal responsibility. And that is when you're given a warning, you got to heed that warning. Personal responsibility is important even when you're trying to protect someone else. And that is the third tentacle of the law. Mr. Rathmel, when you tried to protect your wife, that is a very, very noble thing to do. Under the law, though, you have now assumed the responsibility of harm. That is the biggest legal principle that presides here. You have been warned. You were supposed to get off the beach. You stepped in the way and you were hurt instead of your wife. And despite your injuries, I must find in favor of Lux Day's Resort and Spa and against you. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Your Honor. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Leonard Lundy has to say. When you own a property, you have a basic duty to keep their property in a safe condition. In this case, the resort exercised reasonable diligence by notifying their guests of the impending storm and by telling them to leave the beach and seek shelter. The plaintiffs ignored the storm warnings and as a result were injured. The plaintiffs' assumption of the risk prevented them from winning their case. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Nelson versus Levin. Mr. Nelson, it's my understanding you're suing your ex-wife, Miss Levin, for injuries you sustained while you were on her property. You're asking this court to award you $45,000 for your past medicals, $25,000 for scarring and disfigurement, $90,000 for pain and suffering yep. for a total award of $160,000. Yep. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Levin, you believe that Mr. Nelson caused his own injuries and you don't owe him a thing, Absolutely. true? Absolutely. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's Your get Honor. into the legal sauce. How did you end up at your ex-wife's home? <laughs> well, Sarah and I were married 15 years. She used to be the love of my life. The divorce was finalized four months ago. In the divorce, she got our house, I gotta pay alimony, and she gets half of my 401k. And then, just to be vindictive, I had to go over there and cut down the trees that I planted in our backyard for her for our 10-year anniversary. As part of your divorce? Though? As the divorce decree. Why would you want him to cut trees down at your house? I've asked him for years to cut these trees down. They block a bunch of the light that comes into my kitchen, other parts of the home. He tries to paint me as some bad person, but all of these things that he's saying that he gave me in the divorce. Well, we ain't gonna work out y'all's divorce because some other judge decided that one. I agree. Yeah. However, how do you go from cutting trees down to in that bandage? So, like I said, Your Honor, in the, in the divorce decree, I had 60 days to cut 23 trees down in our former backyard, now her backyard. So... I, the answer is he doesn't know what he was doing. Yeah, well, I didn't know what I was doing. No, I'm sorry you didn't marry a tree expert, Sarah. Mm -hmm. But I go over there, I had a small window of time with a chainsaw. As soon as, as, soon as I get in there, she starts complaining. She, she gets on me. She's got a problem with this. She's got a problem with that. I, I actually, at one point, I had to go outside and vent and send a message to my friends. I just had to get out of that house. Well, you I, submitted a video to this court. Yes, I did. Is this the message that you sent? That is the message because my friends know, know very you well. You don't look really happy. He's does emotionally me. unstable, and oh. he has to get his story out first. That's How do you think I got that way, been. Sarah? Let's see the video. So I'm over here at Sarah's. Got to cut all these trees down. Chainsaw's out of gas. I'm tired. She's giving me dirty looks. I can't stand this woman. 
Miss Levin, were you interfering with this? Were you distracting him? Oh, Absolutely no, no, no. not. He came into the house and I was surprised that it was him by himself. I didn't see any safety equipment. I didn't see that he had hired anybody. So Mr. Nelson, how did this happen? Well, 15 years ago, I married Sarah. Um, well, you thought it was a good idea then, so don't make it such a bad idea today. He also oh, thought oh, believe me, Your Honor, you should have met her then. She was a whole different person. I don't even recognize this. Well, we got who we got today, and she certainly got who she got. How'd this happen? Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah. How'd this happen? So I go over there. I get the chainsaw by myself. I didn't, you know, no, I'm not a tree expert, but, you know, I had a plan. So in our back, in our former backyard, now her backyard, all the trees are in a line. There's this little platform over, looks like a little deck. I'm on the platform, all grab right. the chainsaw, yank, yank. We all know Ch how it chainsaw sounds. Chainsaw's going, chainsaw's going. Oh, you know how it sounds. I thought yeah. you were busy. So I walk over there. I take two steps. There's a loose board. It's not even nailed down. I trip over the board. I fl fly through the railing, land eight feet on the ground, hurt my elbow, broke my elbow, cracked two ribs. I can barely breathe. Chainsaw goes flying through the air. It was like a freaking horror movie. Chops out three of my fingers. Yes. And, oh, and you know what she no. was doing the whole time? You know what she was doing? She was sitting at the kitchen table having a couple of beers, talking on the phone while I'm out there, nearly chopping my entire hand off. And guess who had to call 911 and so pick you up his own off. fingers? Me! Sounds difficult. So you lopped off three of your fingers? Yes. So you fall off this platform, this chainsaw comes down and cuts off three of your fingers? Yes. And that's what your hand looked like? Yes. It's the most excruciating you must have been ever freaking been out with this. Life. So you own the property. He's doing something you wanted. Correct. Right? Yes, sir. And he lops off three of his fingers, and this isn't your fault? His own because negligence. His I, own I asked her a question, so I can't yeah. listen to you. I, I want to hear from you because you are obviously into this. You got skin and fingers in the game. I understand that. Why isn't this your fault? Your Honor, his own negligence and lack of preparedness that's what <laughs> that's what made all of this happen. This had nothing to do with me. This is all of his fault. This is a man you used to love. You see this injury? Mm -hmm. This has got to tug at your heart some. I can tell him what to go do with his hand. Oh. I'm real tempted to get into this mess, but it ain't none of my business. <laughs> Ms. Levin, how did you know something had gone wrong? I didn't. It had nothing to do with me. I wasn't watching him. He. This is all in his head that I saw this happen, that I could have done anything to help him. Well, how did you know he was hurt? Outside, the window. How did you know he was hurt? When I heard the sirens and he was getting into the ambulance, the I, I came called. outside. And what did you do? I obviously tried to do everything that I could. Beer. It had already happened. I didn't even know, honestly, that he was going to use the platform. He didn't bring a ladder. He didn't use any safety equipment. I didn't even know where in the yard he was. Mr. Nelson, you've submitted to this court $45,000 in past medicals. You're asking this court to award you $25,000 for scarring and permanent disfigurement and $90,000 for pain and suffering. I want to understand your injuries. Make me understand. Your Honor, after I fell off the platform, the first thing that happened was I broke my elbow. Then I cracked two of my ribs. And then, like I said, the chainsaw landed on me, chopped out three of my fingers. You've had some very severe injuries. You, yes, you're sir. still wrestling with those, I yes, see. Yes, sir, I'm in pain every single day. And my quality of life has changed dramatically. I work with HVAC, I need both my hands. I barely have one. I'm on light duty, I can't even answer the phone anymore. Your medical records indicate that they were able to reattach your fingers. Can you use that hand? Not right now, not, not until the bandage comes off. I can't, even, I can't even look at it anymore. So this is what your hand looked after they reattached your fingers? Yes, sir. What kind yes. of movement do you have in those two fingers? Not a whole lot. And, and then, like I said, it's covered with a bandage. I can't even do anything with it anyway. Ms. Levin, you now own this property. You want your ex-husband to come over and cut these trees down. Yes, he goes up on your platform, on your property, 
it falls apart and he lops his fingers off. Why is this not your fault? Because it's his negligence that contributed <laughs> to this. He was too cheap to hire anyone. Too he was cheap. too cheap to too hire cheap. to get any safety equipment. This had nothing to do with me. This is a hundred percent. Seven thousand dollars for my guy. Yeah. I gave you a quote. You didn't like my guy. You don't like my guy. Talk I to me. I asked the question. Everybody. I asked the question. You may have done that in your marriage. You don't get to do that in my courtroom. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Levin, you said he was too cheap. What do you mean by that? He didn't hire anyone to help him. He didn't get any safety equipment. He's and a walking bags. liability. If he would have done this in anyone else's backyard and hurt himself, he can't just go around suing people. You could have hired a tree cutter, right? This is a simple job for a tree cutter. Well, first of all, Your Honor, with all due respect, she's getting half my money. <laughs> You might be mad about the divorce, but you got to get in a line of people that's millions of folks long. That's what you agreed to. I'm talking. That's what you agreed to. That's what you're stuck with. But you cut your fingers off. You tell me why it's her fault. Well, in the divorce decree, it says that I can do this job however I want to do this job. No, it job. says that you're responsible. You got to let him talk, Ms. Levin. There's, there's the decree. It reads, final judgment of divorce, the defendant, that would be you, Mr. Nelson, yep. shall be solely responsible for removal of 23 trees from backyard of plaintiff's residence within 60 calendar days of signature of this judgment. Your Honor, if Now, I why can... not hire somebody to do it? You got 60 days to pick somebody. Because, Your Honor... Thank you. He wasn't responsible you... in doing any of this. Responsible? Since... She conned away in the getting our house. Always my fault. He cheated. You in the always marriage. want to relitigate this cheated, divorce. Do I'm you, not you, doing you, that today. He no, cheated the marriage. No, he and asked me a question. Am... We are going to have order in this court, and that's the second time I slammed this. The third time I turned into the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Go okay. Get her. Go get her. No, I'll get you too. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all talk to me. I'm not relitigating your divorce. I simply want to know why did you? not hire somebody to cut these trees down, a professional. I really wish I could have, but since we've been divorced, my life just hasn't been the same. I live in a one-bedroom apartment. I'm behind on my car payment. I'm in debt. So I don't have the money to hire somebody. I don't have the money to hire the 18 grand person that she wanted. I barely had money to hire the seven grand person that I wanted. And that's a buddy of mine who was cutting me a break. Sarah's got a problem with my guy. Sarah so, Ms. Levin, you wouldn't everybody. let his guy cut the trees down? Your Honor, he had 60 days to try and find someone. He got a $7,000 quote that, uh, from someone that I do not want on the property who is not licensed or bonded. I mean, he's a glorified gardener. He's not qualified. Well, what did you think was appropriate? I, the only quote I got was $18,000, but at the same time, it's not my responsibility. But that's a to lot of money. The, but it's his job. It's not my responsibility. It's not my problem. Mr. Nelson, you believe it's her fault. What did Miss Levin do wrong that caused your injury? It's, it was her responsibility to maintain whatever's going on out there. Never had a problem with that platform. You see the boards, how, how old they are? She said she was going to get that fixed. She never told me there was a problem. Ms. Levin, I don't that know. does look Maybe like she that's sabotaged in bad shape. It. Your Honor, not only did he live there when we had a hurricane and he knew that the boards were damaged, but he also knew that I put three of those slats back down without nailing it. He had full knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you all had a hurricane. Yes, while he still lived there. I don't need to tell you that there was a problem. I've been gone Maybe two I months. would have reminded you if you would have come and talked to me and communicated. Now you've submitted a video to this court. Let's take a peek at it on the plasma. This is the storm you were talking about, Ms. Levin? Yes, Your Honor. And you believe this is what damaged the platform? Yes, it's been damaged since that day. Mm -hmm. Well, where was Mr. Nelson living when this storm happened? He was living there. It was, this video was a year before our divorce. So you all were still married when this happened? Yes. So you at least knew what the storm did to the platform, right? But I had been out of the house for two months. She never fixed it. I don't know what she's doing with that house or who's coming in and out of my old house. Ms. Levin, on day one after the divorce, this property became yours and yours alone with the responsibility to keep it in good repair. Why didn't you just fix the platform? I've just been spending my money on other things. <laughs> you mean my money? 
No. And those other things we don't want to talk about. I know what I meant. It's my money. Wow. You know, it's always amazing to me that people who used to love each other become enemies. I know. And this case is about as personal as personal injury gets. I've heard as much as I need to hear, and I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, part of this case sounded like the tail end of a divorce. And while entertaining, maybe even disturbing, it has nothing to do with this case. This case is about a landowner and someone who came on the landowner's property to do a service. That's a premises liability case. As the landowner, you are responsible, Ms. Levin. If you know about hazards, you're to address them in a reasonable way to reduce the risk of other people coming onto the property. You knew about these boards. Not fixing them? The law sees that as wrong. Mr. Nelson, you were hurt badly. Notice I'm not going to talk about whether you were injured or how badly it was. Following a divorce to lop off your fingers, life's been kind of unfair to you. But you too have legal responsibilities. When you go onto a property that you lived on, you're charged under the law for being aware of the hazards on that property. This platform didn't become shaky and raggedy in that two months. The storm caused it to be raggedy. You knew about the storm. And the reason that's important is in a premises liability case, notice of the hazard is the most important thing. If you know more about the hazard as the landowner and you don't address it, he wins. If you know as much about the hazard as Ms. Levin knows, you lose. Here I find you live there. You know this platform. You knew the hazard and could have protected yourself. You are 50% responsible at least, and despite your terrible injuries. I must find against you and in your ex-wife's favor. I find for the defendant. That is my verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Richard Harris has to say. This was clearly a bitter divorce, and the defendant's body language spoke volumes. The case came down to an important fact. The boards on the tree platform were blown off in a prior storm while the plaintiff was still living in the marital home. While they were merely replaced and not nailed down, the plaintiff had knowledge, so his ex-wife did not have a duty to warn him about the danger.